Hey, everybody, look at me and this gorgeous beam of light. I'm so, <laughs> we have been trying to do this for so long. And I have with me now, Common, I'm not even going to try to say your last name. So I'm going to let you say, <laughs> your, you say your full name and pronounce it the way it should be. Hi, Kelly. I'm Common Mohammadi. Hiya. You, you make it sound so easy. Common <laughs> I know we can make it really complicated if you want. That's the problem. I think people look at foreign words and they go, oh, that's really complicated. And then they overcomplicate them. You know, actually, it's just Carmen Mahamdi. It's, it's perfect. And it's actually, <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to think, that sounds like the name of a spice, like a Turkish spice. <laughs> and show them, show them the cup you were drinking out of before. Do you have it right there? My so Iranian copper cup yeah. for healthy water drinking. So I saw that, and of course, I asked her if it was vodka, and she said no, but I know she's lying. <laughs> Too early in the day. <laughs> but when I saw that, for those of you that follow me over here in the U.S., you know I've just discovered Turkish coffee, and I am obsessed. And she was, you know what, that, okay, so here's, for everybody, you heard me introduce Common in the introduction, and... I first reached out, we've been going back and forth to record this show for probably like four or five months, right? Because it was before Christmas. Yeah, I mean, possibly longer. Yeah. And I, so I've read the book, fell in love with the book. We're going to talk about no. the book, but considering so where we are, so we're recording this, what, it's March 20th, um, 2020. <sighs> we're in the midst of this crazy Corona pandemic. And what I thought we'd do instead of diving right into the book is, you know, have you, it's, it's Persian New Year, right? Yes. So absolutely. tell us, let's start with that because you were, you were saying behind you, it's Persian New yes. Year and this is your table. Tell us what that means. Cause us, us U.S. people are like, what does that mean? We don't have cool stuff like Persian New Year. <laughs> well, Hey, you're very welcome to adopt this. Um, there are, you know what, there is such a massive Iranian Persian diaspora in the US. I'd be so surprised if some of your listeners aren't already, you know, aren't already celebrating. Uh, so this is um, called No Ruse. It's the festival of No Ruse, which means literally New Day. And it's a very ancient festival. It's an ancient Zoroastrian festival. So it predates Islam by a couple of thousand years. Um, uh, so it's not religious. Uh, so it's not a Muslim festival. You'll find that some Afghans, some Tajiks, you know, different peoples around that area of um, the Middle East and Central Asia who have come from a kind of the, the, the Persian background, as it were, who have that in their history. They all celebrate it too. So it's not just us. Now, what do we do? We actually, what's gorgeous about this festival, Keddie, is that um, we you know, it's the end of the year, it's the end of winter, and it's the beginning of spring. And, uh, you know, I grew up in Iran until I was nine years old. And then I went to the UK. And, and for sort of all those years in the UK, it was very weird to me that New Year was in the middle of winter, you know, in the middle of like December, January, that never made sense. And inside myself, my body clock always starts to kind of wake up around the beginning of March and get excited because in Iran, that's what would happen. You start, you know, you start preparing three ages before, I mean, at least a month before, because you have to spring clean your house. You have to clear out everything. I mean, really properly spring clean your house. You buy, if you can, new clothes. Otherwise you get, you know, you wash everything. So the idea is that on that, that is that one time of the year when everything is new, everything is renewed, everything is reborn, everything is rejuvenated. And this is in celebration of the fact that we are coming out of winter and spring is showing us that there is hope, there's new life. And, you know, in this weird coronavirus time, I think, I mean, especially us here in Italy that we have been under this for a few weeks now, I think you know, we look out of our windows and we see the buds on the trees and yeah. we see the irises growing. And this gives, oh, I can't even tell you how much this means, how much more than usual this means mm -hmm. to see nature renewing itself. So this festival right now just feels absolutely what we need. So I decided, for the you know, here I am in Italy. Normally I'm with my family in London and my mother makes this extraordinary table. So as well as preparing, we have to grow some kind of grass. I, I mean, lentil and wheat grass. Um, <laughs> just to be clear. 
<laughs> now, this is my own rather pathetic attempt. These are lentils. I don't know. Can you see? I yes. managed to get, I, I put them down too late. So normally my mum has a, a lovely thing that's, you know, going on to here. Mine will grow now, but, you know, I've got enough new shoots anyway. So I sprouted my lentils. So I've got enough new shoots. This symbolizes new life. So this wait, is our I, table. Can I ask you a question? I literally yeah. just bought lentils because we were, you know, stocking up to be planning to cook at home more. And I'm starting to study Ayurveda um, just to address other health concerns before all of this happened. And so I love having, I, I love eating lentils. I've had them at restaurants, but I've never made them. So I just was asking people to give me ideas, but you're saying you can put lentils in a bowl and is that going to grow more lentils? I don't, I'm going to well, sound really stupid. Well, this is a sort of grass. So at some point this will stop. But actually, you know what you can do, Kelly? Th these bits, which have not started to shoot, but which are just sprouts. Can you see the sprouts? Okay. These, you can eat them. You can put them in your really? salad. Where's my hand? Yeah, where's my camera? I can't I sit there. No Absolutely idea. delicious. Yum. So and they're alive. You, just, you put them in a bowl and you added water? Okay, so in order, you just take your regular lentils. Um, you can do this with many things. I always used to do this with all sorts of things, seeds, alfalfa, that kind of thing. So you can take them and you, for let's say a day, 24 hours, you keep them in soaking in water. After that, drain them well and put them on a damp cloth for a couple of days. Keep the cloth damp and you'll see that they'll start growing tiny little shoots huh. and let them just grow for a few days. Keep the cloth damp. And when they are basically, let me find the sprout. When they're kind of like this, hang on, how can I show you? I can Where's see my it. camera? Can, can you see it? it? Yeah. That's perfect. Oh you can eat that. Add to your salad. Absolutely nutritious, brilliant, yummy, so good for you. Yum. Um, I want that on my salad. But, but this is meant to be a beautiful kind of crop thing. Anyway, I managed to get my new shoes. So the idea of our table Common, is... Common, I'm going to give you another idea. We need to have a cooking with Common YouTube channel. I was going to say recipes, right? Because I've got some lentil recipes to give you. <laughs> we're, you guys, we're ideating all kinds of shows with the Kelly and Common show. The Common I mean, the show. creativity here is just amazing. And by the way, there is a lentil recipe in Bella Figura as well. Because oh, traditionally, right. Italians make lentils on New Year's Eve because, because the lentils, um, it's, it's about get, being wealthy. The more lentils you eat, the more money you're going to get. <laughs> That's the Italian uh -huh. tradition for the okay. New Year. Yeah, I know, right? We're all going to get very wealthy after this shutdown. With all the absolutely. Lentils. Abundance. High so vibration, So coming back abundance. to, absolutely, coming back to the Iranian table, so it's called, let me see if I can give you a better view. It's called a half scene, which means seven S's. Now, that's because of the things that are kind of on the table. Wait, oh, I'm not very in control of my camera. Um, now, I didn't have everything this year, obviously. So normally you have, so you know, various symbolic things. As you can see, I have some painted eggs. You can Aww. see how this festival is kind of the precursor to things like Easter, right? Uh -huh. So again, they symbolize new life. Yeah. I have some vinegar, which in Farsi is called serke. So that's one S okay. of the seven S's. Um, vinegar is purity. It wards off. I think it purifies. I have an apple, a seed, which is wisdom, isn't it? Um, I have my sabze, my sprout, which is new life. I do not have um, live goldfish, so I have them. <laughs> I have them represented here, and uh, the goldfish is again. It's about new life, but also gold. Those flashes, beautiful flashes. Um, I have here. Let me show you my things here. So I've got. I can't see what you can see, but I'll, you can tell, tell you. me right. Right now, I see I've your got, hand. Seke, which is coins, again, okay. well, I've got sumac, which is sumac, that's by sumac, Okay. Um, spice of life, I've got 
Sanjed, which I, for the life of me, I do not know what that is called in English. I had to bring that with me from the UK. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe some of your listeners will know. Um, and these are all the different things that symbolize, you know, life, rebirth, renewal. We've got some, normally I'd have hyacinths, um, but I haven't got hyacinths because that's the symbol. So I've got another flower. We have the candle for light. We have the mirror also to symbolize all of the light of the world. And we have, um, hang on a minute. Now in, in Iran, of course, since the Arab invasion, we ended up putting uh, Qurans on the table in order to be able to keep our festival and make it religious. But in reality, um, most Iranians will put the book of poems of Hafez. Okay. Um, Hafez is a, a medieval poet. And in Iran, his book, basically, you take a follow Hafez, you, you also take, tell your fortune. So you can have um, something that you're worried about or you need guidance on and you meditate on it and then you open Hafez and you read the first verse that your eye falls on and that always gives you the answer. Oh, so there it. you go. Yeah. So that's my half scene. That's my sort of lockdown version of the traditional table. Um, I'll send you a picture of my mum's later and you'll see how fancy, how fancy the real ones are. Oh, it's but anyway, beautiful. I felt, thank you. I thought I was quite proud of it actually in the sense that I thought it was going to be very sort of pathetic, but actually, you know what, doing it yesterday was a bit of a, a the last couple of days have been a bit of a down day, I think, because we're really beginning to understand that, you know, we're in, the second week of this and the death toll is rising and it, it feels quite scary. Um, and I, that made me really determined, you know, to do our traditional rituals. First of all, because I needed to keep busy, but also because um, I've always found this, Kelly, really in my life, um, my culture and my traditions give me so much comfort because they give me such a sense of belonging to something mm -hmm that's bigger and longer um and i i guess we need a bit of context right now to understand that you know we we humans have been through things yes um, and and survived um and also ritual is meaningful and comforting and i really felt also this whole sense of it being about new birth new day new life rejuvenation you know this is really what we need so i ring cleaned my house for the last two days and I'm so happy about it it's absolutely <laughs> sparkling um I'm so proud you know we have quite a large house so it's this is not something that happens very often um, <laughs> and you know here we are right there's no help no one is coming in so it's all down to us and actually we just my husband and I had a lovely collaborative couple of days absolutely cleaning the house from top to bottom and and I really, you know, I woke up on Tahvil Asal, which was at um, 10 minutes to five this morning, because every year, you know, it's different. Um, so I woke up on that moment because I felt that it would be really auspicious on that moment to really um, meditate on what we want to leave behind and what we want to welcome into the new year. Um, and... Yeah, I'm in a really jolly mood today, you know, and partly because of that. Um, I was thinking when we were kids and also not when we were kids, because we've been quite traditional in our family. We would always, you know, when New Year falls in the middle of the night, we would always get up. Really? We would always get up. Yeah, we would get up. We'd put on our new clothes. We'd all gather around the, um, the New Year table. My father would read the ball on. We would all, uh, you know, pray. Um, we would all watch the fish at the exact moment because there's always this rumor that, that this myth, let's say, that the fish jump at the exact moment of the, the turn <laughs> of the year. Uh, we would have on, you know, some kind of Iranian radio um, in the last few years and my father hasn't been with us. We've always had cousins. Sometimes we've had aunties and people who are alone in Iran who are on their videos, who sit on our half scene on our videos, you know. So, um, for this year I'm not near any of my family you know it's just me and my husband I let him sleep at five o'clock this morning um and it was and I thought that being away from home for the first time in ever for no ruse was going to be really heartbreaking but actually first of all 
this is what's happened and there's no choice. Um, but it was very, it's, it's been very comforting and very happy making. So I would really recommend to people always, if you have, if you have a rich background, as so many of us do, um, and if you've gone through any process like I have of feeling very uh, disaffected and alienated sometimes from that background because of wearing so many identities and cultures, um, it's anyway can be a real comfort. So I would say, you know, uh, look back at the ancestral traditions and embrace them. And also be flexible with them, share them, adapt them, you yes. know. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, more and more, I think we, we need to take on our own kind of, um, we need to take on our own rituals and our own things that make us happy. I can't agree with you more. And I will tell you, as a typical, somewhat boring American, we don't like hearing you describe spring and the new year. We don't, we don't do that. And, and just hearing the way that you're setting up this table that, I mean, I wrote it down before you said it. I said, what a great sense of ritual because rituals are comforting. They are heartwarming. And just hearing you, I've never heard of this before, but hearing you describe it um, is amazing. It reminds me back when I was in Chicago, um, the church that I went to um, it was a Bible teaching church. And this, uh, our pastor at that time had um, all, world leaders from all different religions come in and just share their traditions, you know, so they had mm. a, a rabbi explain what they do at Passover and they had mm. somebody else from uh, the Muslim faith describe mm. what they do. And, and they all mm. had so many rituals and traditions. And truthfully, I think that's why I'm so excited. We're shooting this on video because you know what, for everybody listening and watching, if you don't have a ritual, what a better time to adopt one. I hearing the the way that you describe the new year and it's spring, and I I think especially in the midst of this Corona quarantine and the way that our lives are right now, to be able to look outside like you and see the trees budding and the flowers blossoming. And this morning the news came that in Venice they have swans swimming in the canals and dolphins, and that that apparently has not been happening for a long time. There's signs of rebirth all over, but why not start adopting a ritual, a practice that you can do that has meaning, something that, so how long would you leave your table set up like that for? So our half scene is meant to be up and for 13 days, and on the 13th day in Iran, that's a two week holiday. Again, this is why, I mean, let's just remember that, you know, Iran is going through this. Iran is going through the worst, you know, at the moment, Italy has got the worst figures in the world, but you know, Iran obviously has much less reliable figures. So um, right now in Iran, these would be the happiest weeks, you know, the weather is getting nice. I mean, as I'm saying this to you, I'm just remembering what it was like, you know, walking down the streets in Tehran just before New Year with the hustle and the bustle and everyone shopping and, you know, people singing and dancing on the streets, you know, the various characters that we have from the New Year's story that entertain you. And this is still trying to go on in Iran, like the government have made sure there's musicians on the streets, but people are at home. And what you would do is after Tahdi Lasal, after your the actual New Year, we'd start visiting each other, and you start with the eldest of your family, and you basically spend those two weeks visiting, and um, it's the most sociable time, and everyone goes to see everybody, and everyone calls on everybody, and then on the thirteenth day we have something called Sistabedat, and on and you have to go outside, you have to be in nature. In fact, you see pictures of people in, in Tehran sometimes picnicking on um, roundabouts in the middle of like the big streets that they have. I love because it. Because that's the <laughs> bit of green that they can find, you know. Yeah. Um, so you have to be in nature and you take your sabze, your sprouts, which by then, you know, will be grown like this. And you have to throw it into flowing water. Now, I'm not exactly sure why, and I probably ought to know but again one of your listeners might know or you know next time I'll try and uh, I'll try and find out and let you know what the symbolism of that is that you have to throw this um this life into flowing water 
this thing that you've grown, which has been the symbol of life. Maybe it's about letting it go to go yeah. forward and to go on. I don't know. Um, I'll look it up though. And, um, and also if you're not married, if you're unmarried, if you want, then you are meant to um, knot 13 pieces of grass together. And if you do that, by then you'll be married by this time next year. That's what they say. Oh, so, I you know, there's it. been times in my life when I've wanted to knot the grass. And there's been times in my life when I'm like, I am not knotting that grass. <laughs> you know I'm not. I mean. Rip it apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. But the I idea of Sizdavadar is that you spend a day in nature together and you picnic and you you know celebrate and that's the end of the no ruse holiday so it goes on for two weeks i i love everything about this i mean we our idea of spring cleaning is like going to home depot and buying a plant and you know <laughs> putting or maybe mowing the lawn i i don't mow the lawn but <laughs> we i think in america where you tend to see the most tradition and ritual and and that's what's ironic as i'm thinking about this you see it, it's around christmas and thanksgiving and yeah. that's when you see people going, no matter what, I'm going to go home. I'm going to visit family. Yeah. Um, people, people are sometimes complaining that it's so hectic. But on the other hand, they love the holidays. They love tradition. There's things that families do. But outside of that, the rest of the year, the other holidays, they don't, they're not given that much attention and ritual. And I see that people change for the better November mm. and December over here. And I think that there's mm. something to be said about this, yeah. you know, hearkening back to our history, to our culture. And it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't have to be that if we don't have that history, why not adopt and start looking? I'm a history major in college and history of art. So why, and I see the dog under the table. <laughs> oh, she's there. Hi, B. Oh. oh, you can, there's another two over there. And let's see if we can get them over. <laughs> I saw them on your Instagram story this morning. Oh. You know, um, we're really lucky also at the moment because, you know, my husband, well, he's a photographer, but he also breeds for dogs. But um, we've got a couple of litters of puppies at the moment. So actually also, especially for my friends who are cooped up in, in little apartments in the city, I've been trying every day to put up some, you know, on my Instagram story, some kind of puppy watch so yeah. that... Um, so that people can get a little bit of light relief. Because you know what? It's there if you look for it. And it is so easy. I told myself yesterday, and this will be a good segue for us to talk about wh what it's like in Italy right now versus here and compare notes. Um, and then talk about how we can get our minds and our hearts and our souls and our hope in the right place. Because that's so key right now, universally, wherever we are. Um, yeah. But, you know, I realized yesterday that I, I found myself in here working and I found myself checking the news like every 15 minutes and reading what people were posting on Facebook about the news every 15 minutes. And when you do that, it's like, not only do you not get work done or take a break, but it's just, you almost get so overwhelmingly scared and depressed. It's not good. It's good to be in the know but I had to tell Steve, I'm like, from now on, I'm checking the news in the morning and then maybe we'll watch it in, in the evening once. But in between, we have to start focusing on the positive. Um, and that's what you and I had talked about. And we're going to get into yeah. that. But let's yeah. first tell us. So you're in Tuscany right now. Is that right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. We're about 25 kilometers outside of Florence. So you're outside the city. But tell us. You, because you guys, what we hear right now on the news is that Italy is is you had the most deaths yesterday. But what you guys tell us what what it's been like for you. When when did everything change for you? When did you make the decision to come home? Because you were you've been going back and forth from London to Tuscany. Update us. That's on where right. You are. Okay, so I spend my time between London and Tuscany. Um, I tend to start my year in London because I produce a magazine there. So, and that's, I have to go into the office. Now, it's really odd to think that even when I was leaving here sort of around the 20th of January, um, there was people at the airport in wearing masks. So it's been going on, right, for a while. Yeah. We, you know, we've all had it hovering in the background, haven't we, since kind of January. Um, so I was in London. I did my work. Um, it was the end of February and I was book to come back I, I normally would hang around a little while longer um, and do things but anyway I thought 
I should get back here because I could see that things, that's when things had started already kind of taking off in Italy. Um, and basically the coronavirus had kind of arrived in Europe and it was being spread around Europe by Italians and by people coming to Italy. And it was very much in the north of the country. And I was in my office, this is a fashion magazine and everyone came back from Milan, um, from the Milan shows. And that was when, for example, Armani closed the show by, by um, doing the catwalk in an empty auditorium. So that was when the kind of lockdown started in the northern part of the country. It was the Venice Carnival was on and they finished, stopped it early, but they kind of let it go on all weekend before stopping it. You know, so there was quite a lot of things that were happening that were very attracting many, you know, even more crowds and tourists than ever. So at that point, this was what, the middle of February? Um, they started to kind of talk about locking down those areas in the north of the country. So that was Lombardy and the Veneto. Now, these, this contains uh, places that you know everyone will have heard of. Venice is in the Veneto. Milan is in Lombardy. And this is also, Kelly, you know, the area of Italy that 30% um, of Italy's wealth comes from. So this is where the industry is. This is where things happen. This is where people work. And this is where, you know, you have a lot of people, also Italians, who are not from there, who go there to for work right so the lockdown as it was i think no one was really sure what that meant but it was really kind of about you know trying to keep those i think there were 11 towns that were involved kind of closing them down trying to stop people from going in and out taking social distancing measures but really nothing really stopped right people were just being told to be careful um I then thought, well, I should probably get back home, really. I then also thought, should I or should I stay here and be with my mum? You know. Hard choices for everybody. Right. Um, in London, there seemed to be almost nothing going on. My husband said to me, you just need to consider as you're coming back that, you know, you might not be able to leave Italy for a while because the way that this is going, it might be that once you're here, you come on, and I went, well, that's fine. Just quite nice to come home. Um, now, I've got lots and lots of things that are meant to be happening in London, you know, and all over the place all the time because I'm a writer and I do all sorts of things. So, you know, I'm always going up and down. In this instance, I cleared my diary. Some kind of instinct told me in January, clear your diary. Um, I was meant to come back for two weeks, then go back to do a yoga teacher training, then, do, you know, and then be in London for no ruse. But um yeah i cleared my diary i cancelled everything i just i changed my flights i just kind of and this wasn't even about the coronavirus something in me just went just go home and stay there so i came home thinking that i'm gonna stay here for the next few months anyway and by the way i have a new book to write so it's fine um yay <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm um, so excited <laughs> <laughs> so i got here on the 29th of february kelly so on the first of march um, I went, I'm going to self-isolate anyway, because I'm really tired. I've just spent two months of that really fast and full on life, you know, media, working in the media, glossy magazines in London and, um, you know, really doing that, that life. So I, I kind of need a rest now. So I kind of stayed home for a week. Now, look, we, um, live in the middle of the countryside. We are about a 40 minute drive from Florence. Um, I quite often come home and if I'm writing or if I'm kind of in recovery from London, I'll quite often not move from here for a week or two anyway. Yeah. Because, you know, we live about 500 meters up. The air is really fresh. There's no motorways near us. Um, we're right in the foothills of the Apennines, the Apennine mountains that come down the middle of Italy like a spine. So you know they get us to the other coast so we're we're getting into the border between Tuscany and Emilia Romagna here um it's a part of Tuscany that's very beautiful very wild it's not that sort of typical Chianti we don't have a lot of tourism here it's very very rural where we are and um and I really love it 